at some point, I truly think that like, you know, we'll spawn models and initially all the training will be in sandboxes. But then at some point, you know, the language model pre-training is going to be dwarfed by what is this reinforcement learning? You know, you'll, you'll pre-train a multimodal model that can see, that can read, that can write, you know, blah, 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 whatever, vision, audio, et cetera. But then you'll have it play in a sandbox infinitely and figure out figure out math figure out code figure out navigating the web figure out operating a robot arm right yeah. and then it'll learn so much and the aha moment i think will be when this is available to then create something that's not good right like oh cool part of it was like figuring out how to use the web now all of a sudden it's figured out really well how to just get hundreds of thousands of followers that are real and real engagement on twitter because all of a sudden this is one of the things that are verifiable and maybe not just engagement but make money yes like become an I mean, that could be the thing where almost fully automated, it makes, you know, $10 million by being an influencer, selling a product, creating the product, like, and, and I, I'm not referring to like a hype product, but an actual product where like, holy shit, this thing created a business. It's running it. It's the face of the business, that kind of thing. Maybe Or maybe a number one song, like it creates the whole infrastructure required to create the song, to be the influencer that represents that song, that kind of thing, and makes a lot of that could be the move. I mean, this our culture respects money in that kind of way, and it's and it's verifiable, right? It's yeah. Verifiable, right? <laughs> the, the bank account can't lie. <laughs> exactly. There is surprising evidence that once you set up the ways of collecting the verifiable domain, that this can work. There's a, been a lot of research before this R1 on math problems, and they approach math with language models just by increasing the number of samples. So you can just try again and again and again, and you look at the amount of times that the language models get it right. And what we see is that even very bad models get it right sometimes. And the whole idea behind reinforcement learning is that you can learn from very sparse rewards. So it it doesn't, the, the space of language and the space of tokens, whether you're generating language or tasks for a robot is so big that you might say that it's like, I mean, each, the tokenizer for a language model can be like 200,000 things. So at each, each step, it can sample from that big of a space. So if it can generate a bit of a signal that it can climb onto, that's the, what the whole field of RL is around is learning from sparse rewards. And the same thing has played out in math where it's like very weak models that sometimes generate answers. We see research already that you can boost their math scores. You can do this sort of RL training for math. It might not be as effective, but if you take a 1 billion parameter model, so something 600 times smaller than DeepSeek, you can boost its grade school math scores very directly with a small amount of this training. So it's not to say that this is coming soon. Setting up the verification domains is extremely hard, and there's a lot of nuance in this, but there are some basic things that we have seen before where it's like it's at least expectable that there's a domain and there's a chance that this works.